As Detroit's population steadily grew and urban living became increasingly dense, the risk of structural fires also escalated. In response, the Detroit Fire Department began constructing on a new training facility in 1930 to equip firefighters with advanced fire suppression techniques. Designed by Hans Grecke, a renowned architect behind over a dozen of the city's firehouses, the Detroit Fire Department Training Academy was completed in 1930. The facility remained in operation for 84 years until its closure in 2015 when the department relocated to a modern building, marking the end of an era in fire safety education. A news article in a 1950s issue of the Detroit Free Press described the Academy as one of the best in the United States, and it has permanent situations set up, including a six-story building. The chief of the school at the time was William S. Allison, and he told reporters that he sets fires on various floors of the school and sets the students to work. To make things more interesting, one of the men will be placed in the building to await rescue from the flames and smoke. In later years, the Detroit Free Press also reported teenagers from Detroit high schools participated in a training course at the academy over their summer break. In addition to learning about firefighting, the teens learned first aid and life-saving practices. Over the years, the training facility was the site for firefighter applications and training sessions. Job advertisements appeared in local newspapers nearly every decade, promoting the opportunity to join the department. A fire engine and ladder truck were stationed at the facility for several decades, giving trainees first-hand experience and close interaction with active firefighters as they worked on the front lines. However, it is believed by the early 1990s only EMS services remained. In March of 1987, a vacant building adjacent to the training center caught fire. Previously home to Northway Motors, the Motor City Wiping Cloth Company had most recently occupied the structure, which it had vacated several years earlier. Willie James Clemens, who identified himself as an alcoholic, later pled guilty to starting the fire. At the time, the city had begun demolition on the building when it was destroyed by the blaze, which also engulfed neighboring Continental Paper and Supply Company, which was still in operation. Three firefighters, Lieutenant Paul Schimmick, 46, Lieutenant Dave Lau, 58, and Larry McDonald, Jr., 20, died from fighting the blaze. Clemens, seen running from the building during the fire, was convicted second-degree murder and sentenced to life in prison. The company that had left behind the kindling saw no legal action. By the 1990s, the building showed signs of deterioration and required modernization. In the mid-2000s, the training facility provided free lunch for children during summer break. However, the surrounding neighborhood had been vacated by that time, with most industries having left the area. The vacant building soon became a target for thieves and vandals. In December of 2018, a small fire broke out, prompting officials discovered that sensitive documents containing personal information were still inside. This did not come as a shock given similar findings at previously abandoned city-owned buildings. The documents were subsequently removed and the building was secured. However, it has since been reaccessed by trespassers. Thank you so much for tuning into this month's video. If you enjoyed it, remember hit that thumbs up button. This helps YouTube understand that people like you enjoyed the content and will recommend it to others who may also enjoy it. If you're feeling generous, consider subscribing to the channel and clicking that notification bell to stay up to date on new content. And as always, explorers, until next time, stay safe.